Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. Um, it's a, a great honor for me to be up here and, and present our artist today. Um, you know, he's, he's known as simply the voice of South Africa, and he, he's been a great inspiration to me, and I'm, I'm sure a number of you, as well as many throughout uh, South Africa and, and Africa in general. Um, Grammy-winning, performed for the likes of Paul Simon, uh, Dave Matthews, Latest Smith, Black Mombasa, um, and, and a variety of others. Um, I'm going to keep it short because I think, like you, I want to I hear more from him. Um, our, our guest today, Vusi Mahasalala. Thank you. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and um, I think uh, this will be just uh, more of my uh, stories that I'll be taking you through my uh, poetry and songs and uh, yeah I guess after that uh, we can have maybe questions or so uh, the song that I'm going to play for you, I'll uh, sort of explain to you afterwards what's the song about. Can't 
Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, the song I was singing uh, is titled Obuse Bom Saba, meaning the beauty of our land, or may I say the beauty of our, our country. Um, here I was not only just singing about the beauty of my country or the land, but also about uh, uh, quite a lot of things which were really disturbing um, and uh, very sad, you know, to sort of like really witness that uh, through the time when it was really quite a lot of turmoil. Um, in, in, in South Africa under apartheid, where we also witnessed the police brutality, police playing with our dead corpses, thinking that we don't know about this. And here in the song I'm saying, we will call them and teach them about those corpses. And if they agree, we will forgive them. But if they don't, we will expose them. And of course, this was written long before we could think that we were going to have, uh, you know, uh, the truth and reconciliation in South Africa, if you remember. Uh, the truth and reconciliation, uh, which is something that, of course, that was championed by our grandfathers of humanity, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, uh, people who also were talking about the wisdom of forgiveness, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Dr. Nelson Mandela, and the men who lived in South Africa many years and uh, planted a seed of reconciliation, Mr. Mahatma Gandhi. These are the grandfathers of humanity who taught us that there is wisdom in forgiveness. That if you learn to forgive, you learn more.
to be free, not to release more calmness within the innermost of yourself and become more free. But if you don't forgive, you are your own prisoner. If you don't forgive, you are the one who's suffering the most. You will become like a bitter leaf that can just be squashed or be swept away by the wind anytime. So forgiveness is really important and we should all wear it like a crown. Thank you. This next uh, this is um, about the um, man that I came to sort of like like uh, or love his writing and uh, poetry. Um, this is about uh, yeah more the, the first part of the poem that he wrote and then there is a second part which is more about uh, you know okay the song will explain itself but uh, the song is more about cancer we were from uh, Nigeria who was also killed by the forces of the state of taxes, of oil and power. They speak of war, of guns and bullets. They speak of blood and putrid human flesh. But a smile from Marie. Okay, um, this next piece, uh, it is um, a poem also that was written in one of um, South African jails in solitary confinement. And uh, yeah, a prison warden 
you know, who was like very much understanding, you know, with hindsight, just smuggled in a pen. And uh, this was written on top of a toilet paper. It's more about uh, the uh, pain of separation. La, la, la. Tuning. End of song. This is a story of uh, the two birds. They lived in a dry land uh, where there was quite a lot of hunger and very drought. And um, the other bird didn't have um, wings, and the other one, no eyes. And they said, Man, ah, we have to come up with a plan here. We can't just be here and stuff, you know, we have to do something. And the other bird said, okay, fine, yeah, we'll have to do this and fly somewhere. So I'll be your wings and you'll be my eyes. And indeed, they both flew to some greener pastures. Uh, this is more also the story about uh, Mr. Nelson Mandela and uh, um, Mr. who was the president when Mr. Mandela was released. It's about both of them when they flew to no way to receive the Peace Nobel Prize. But I think also the lesson here is more about uh, teaching us that you know we need to honor each other as people. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Uh, this next piece, uh, it's, um, when I wrote this song, I thought, of course, that time I was uh, writing it uh, to some of my friends who left the country and even those who left before, you know, to skip the country, to go outside, to enlist in a fight, to fight the evil monster of apartheid. Um, and uh, yeah, it was about those in exile. If when they come back, you know, the fears if they will, how will they found, how will they found the country, you know, what position will it be, and then whether they will find their families, jobs, and things like that. But it's also a celebration of life. But I think it is something that I discovered that also this song, when I wrote it, I thought I was writing it for those people who went to exile, but it was also about my life a road map for me to come back home, find my paternal roots. But, uh, yeah. And, um, of course, right now, there is a new chapter for Africa. A lot of good things are really happening now. And, uh, as you know, we are hosting the World Cup for the first time in Africa. Um, I will be playing at the kickoff concert of the World Cup on the 10th of June. So I'm, I'm happy that, you know, Africa is something made happening. This is the unknown grave. The one who died maintaining his mind. 
Mustafa that game so this is the unknown grave the one who died maintaining his might his will been so strong and musically inclined his sad melodies coming out like a smoke from the woody fire confessing who died last night who died this morning and why one dangerous mind for million graves look down into the grave and do not weep skeleton confessing the lost of music culture and believe skeleton confessing the age of lamentations the age of broken minds and the souls i picked up the soil from this unknown grave and blew it up with the wind as to make a reference one day and i sang my Africa, sing now, Africa, sing loud, sing to the people, let them give something to the world, and not just to take it from it. And we'll ring the bells when you come back. We'll beat the drums when you come back. We'll ring the bells when you come back. We'll beat the drums when you come back. Our lost African music will turn into the music of the people. Yeah, the people's music and the people's culture. And I'll be the This one is uh, more about, you know, when one was like touring, going to quite a lot of different places, uh, meeting people, shaking many people's hands. Great. And um, I remember also one time when I was, I did about 41 shows in 47 days with a uh, project called Acoustic Africa, me and Habib Kwate and Tobe Nyairu from Ivory Coast. I don't think I want to do that again. <laughs> but it's always great, you know, but sometimes it's hard and it's like, ah, oh. you get uh, homesick and something new just tell you, Africa. So. Stranded with a rucksack and guitar. 
lounges and the places change and the sky has different stars I be walking in the streets of a city called London but the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heart it say Africa I might be walking in the streets of a city called Amsterdam by the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heart say Africa 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 Sticks and stones and the UN loan and the passport control Countries that don't exist It's a big world, they have their own problems everyone And there's gold that can't twist Yes, and I might be walking in the streets of a city called Amsterdam But the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heart say Africa I'd be walking in the streets of New York, yeah. Uh, the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heart beat. Say Africa. 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 Africa. People ask me where I'm from, I say my melody township In a city called Tswane, meaning we are the same I have a friend who's a great musician and is from nearby Near King Williamstown, you know where Steve Biko was born And I might be walking in the streets of a city called London But the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heart beat, say Africa might be walking in the streets of a city called Amsterdam But the dust on my boots and the rhythm of my feet and my heart beat, say Africa Say Africa Say Africa Say Africa Africa Good to man, good to man, good to man Yeah, say Africa Thank you. Um, I'd like to dedicate this one to all the women in South Africa, those women who refuse to dwindle in the midst of apartheid. Uh, and of course, dedicating it to my grandmother also, who really helped me a lot uh, as a young activist then, I mean, you have to be in quite a lot of problems with the police and the many other like her suffering of the same faith. Piercing through the gloom of my ignorance 
friends were there to mumble, lying down, sleeping, the very ill, and they had to cry. Wondering, 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 what to see this world coming to? Is it right that small children have to fend for themselves? No, no, no. Is it right women struggling in this uncertain world? No, no, no. Is it right heaping trouble on an old lady's head? So unlucky, faceless people suffering every day. song like the blues man or troubadour and in from long distance in no blues club I might say baby 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 should I now stop singing of love my memory is surrounded by blood. Sister, why, oh, why do we at times mistake a pimple for a cancer? So who are they who say no more love poems now? I want to sing a song of love for that woman who jumped the fences pregnant and still gave birth to a healthy child. <laughs> Softly I walk into this embrace of this I love so my song of life my song of love my song of life my song of love my song of life To run away from song I hear a persistent voice More powerful than the enemy bombs Demanding this song That washed our lives In the rains of our blood But never, never do much Song of love, my song of love, 
my song of love. Let me have everybody sing with me. My song of love. My song of love. I can't hear you. My song of love. My song of love. You can do better. My song of love. My song of life. Okay, okay. My song of love. My song of life. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. My song of love. My song of life keeps singing, keep singing. My song of My soul of life is relax, relax, relax. Thank you very much. Um, I'll, play you, I'll play you the last song, and then from there, maybe if there's uh, anything that we need to go by, we can do justice to that. Um, Get 
デバルガタビデバアチクデレレバドボスラビデバパラガテジェバドゥブドゥビデバアチクデバレバドバアラエアビラバエアビラバエアビラバアンダブルダンエアビラバエアビラバエアビラバブドゥレバドゥベンダラダシケデバンテレレバンダランデチクツケンダルゥビルビWas、uh, quite a lot of music.、Um, uh, those、um, organizations from the BC Black Consciousness Movement, ZAPO, up until it was like, you know, the UDF and the unions and all that, you know, there was just more drive of the music and all that. I don't know if you have seen、uh, the film called Amandla,、uh, with, uh, the struggle was engaged in four parts、uh, music, theater, writing. And of course,、um, um, when, when, I, when I was born, when I was young,、uh, for me, I didn't know, you know that there was like, you know, trouble in my country,、uh, of injustice and so on. So I came to realize this、uh, in 1976 when the students of South Africa were courted the language of Africans as a medium of oppression,、uh, where the students wanted to speak to the government. And、uh, the answer was more bullets, more bullets, more bullets. I was 11 years old, and、uh, this escalated to other townships as well.、Uh, I remember in Mamelodi, it was on the 21st of June. And there w a s these people marching and a lot of music and chanting and everything. And I was like, wow. You know, and I tried to you know, ask questions. And then, yeah, that's when my first political education started. And、uh, there was just quite a lot of music you know, all over and everything. And apart from that,、uh, there has been music that I've been hearing at home because my grandmother you know, owned a Shebin, what you call the speakeasy here, or backyard pub. And、uh, of course, there will be some songs that I'll hear these people who will be singing you know, in the backyard, and then also n Kusis Kelele that was not allowed to be sung you know, around that time. Um, so, music in many different ways really played quite, quite, it played quite a lot of、uh, a role to encourage people you know, to stand up, you know, realize really what was really happening to them through the message of the song that was telling them what was happening around that time and what they have to do.、Uh, I, I was going to ask、uh, about the languages that you're singing in and how many different languages you, you typically do sing in. And,、um, Or, or how many you speak, and how you well, think about which, which languages to use where in your songs, and how to, how to mix them together. Well, I sing in several languages in my music, and、um, you know, we have、uh, 11 official languages, but、uh, still, there are other languages that people speak you know, in the country which are more dialects to other languages, but you don't find it you know, in a book form or in, you know, in print. And、uh, 
of course, uh, when I uh, maybe compose or whatever, it depends what comes first, whether music or words. <laughs> and uh, sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's good when I can comp I mean, incorporate both, you know, at the same time. But sometimes it's just that the message that you want to bring across, you know, uh, through the subjects that you're sort of talking about in song or poem. Uh, whether you, 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 you like it or not, you might feel that, no, I want everybody to hear this and everything. But you find that when you try to translate it into English, it doesn't work. It looks, it loses the, in, the, the meaning, you know. So rather stick in Tswana or Zulu or Kosa. But if there's something that maybe that sort of can work, work and then all and then I put it in English so that everybody you know, can hear, and then it's, it's, it's okay. Um, those are some of the things that one sort of like really find. And the song directs you where they want to go, you know, and you just have to re pay respect and attention and, you know, follow the way they, where they direct you. Hi, can you tell us more about your work in furthering education in Africa and maybe the African uh, Leadership Academy? Uh, yeah, there is a school in uh, South Africa which is called uh, the Africa African Leadership Academy. Uh, well, my role for, for, for the academy was uh, more, uh, I, I performed, you know, um, at the opening years, you know, I think for the past two years. And I'm also a friend of uh, one man who's also sitting on the board. Uh, the guy who sort of like really started, you know, the foundation, I mean, the academy, uh, we met at the TED conference in Arusha this time. And uh, I think uh, what is more important about the African Leadership, Leadership Academy, they are developing, you know, um, yeah, leaders, you know, for tomorrow, like Nelson Mandela. You know, and uh, I think with everything that they will sort of like ready up, so they have to plow it back, you know, and take it back to their, to their uh, places where they come from and all that. And I think maybe to explore more, coming to further, you know, their studies, maybe in universities like Stanford and so on. But I think, you know, the African leadership plays quite a lot of uh, important role in that cuts. But um, <clears throat> I've been touring as well here in schools and universities, you know, giving talks, you know, going to classes, those who are doing music, arts and music, modern history, African history studies, all that. And uh, I feel that also some of the uh, students who are at the African Leadership Academy, no, no, what am I saying? Not African Leadership Academy, but <clears throat> that was my role as well, you know, to do this performances and going to colleges and universities as well to share my poetry and stories in those classes I've mentioned. Yeah. Thank you very much, first of all, for the concert. I really enjoyed it. Um, my question is really, are you going to be in the Bay Area and having other concerts so friends of mine can get a chance to hear you? Is there any concerts coming? Yeah. Do you have oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to play at Yoshi's in Auckland uh, tomorrow. And then I'll be also in Seattle after that. Yeah. And I've got a, a new CD that I'll be recording after I finish in Seattle. I'm going to Charlottesville, Virginia, a recording at the, uh, Mr. Dave Matthews studio. So, and then uh, Mr. Taj Mahal will be the producer for the album. So the song that I play, one of them say Africa, will be one of the songs featured in the album. Hi, uh, my name is Phineas Mflanga, and um, I welcome you here. It's, it was great to hear your music. Um, I actually just had a question regarding kind of the motivation. You, you, you touched on the aspect of African history um, and, you know, keeping the word going and how the young people receiving your music nowadays and, and, and how do you try to depict that information through your music uh, with the current times and the modern times and the change in history? Um... Yeah, I think it, it, it is very much important that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the youth today, of course, there's quite a lot of things that they are really sussing out, you know, checking, especially through technology, which is you know, the, and the music that they are making with some of the effects and everything that they do. But I think to check where the raw thing comes from, it's very much important, not only just about the music and then perhaps the indigenous instruments which is sort of accompanying there or something like that. But I think the message as well is very much important. 
uh, I think building up on that is like, you know, after the post-apartheid South Africa, what I've witnessed as well, you know, in South Africa, uh, the uh, some kind of, you know, the ignorance that you see on the youth forgetting that, you know, the, the privileges and the rights that they're enjoying, they didn't just come by. People fought for and died for, and therefore they, they need some kind of a cultural revolution in some way. And songs that particularly say something about where we come from, how it happened, you know, so as to make love today to the future, it's very much important that they hear this. And uh, it, 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 with, with what I'm doing as well, going to, to schools and colleges and everything, you know, where the students are asking similar questions and everything, wanting to know them, it's very much important because art, music, it's really power. Uh, through music, you can sort of like really, you know, bring out things that you want to address whereas other people are afraid to say it but with your music you say it and freely without you know or write whatever you you like you know and nobody says like, no, no you don't have to write that and you do it and when people see you doing that they're like, ah he can do that you know so then they have the courage you know, to stand up and do something about the situations that they are seeing to, or that they want to correct mm. A quick question about your collaborations. You've collaborated with some amazing people, and hearing your music today, it sounds very personal um, and very intimate, and you're telling a very profound story. I wonder with these collaborations with like Paul Simon or Dave Matthews, how you establish that intimacy or that connection with that artist in order to present that forward in a song? Well, it is more uh, about you know, just bringing the musical energy it doesn't matter within whatever you know subjects you know that you know we sort of like really be alighting there in the song it's just to collaborate and if it is a song that you know the artist has chose that is very special i want Bushi to come and sing with me i i, I don't have a problem with that and that i've co collaborated with many artists mr warren hens the song called soul shine which i love you know the song and the, mr paul simon also led me to play you know and sing his songs like uh, Under African Skies, Boy in the Bubble. And, uh, and uh, when the artist also said, look, make the song your song. You know, give your own treatment. You know, don't worry that this is Paul Simon's song or whatever. Feel the music just, and I, I love that. And then, you know, when they also sing my song, it, it's also ab about that, you know. And I think... This is when uh, politicians with the different parties, if they can have that kind of a collaborate, collaboration to sort out problems, that will work. Hi, just, just one question for me. Thank you so much for your presentation. Yeah. Um, my name is Dennis. I'm, <clears throat> I work with Google in the Nairobi office, and I'm very passionate about um, the role of language um, uh, in the adoption of technology. So. As a follow-up to the question uh, about the role of music, uh, and particularly music yeah. in uh, indigenous languages, and how you express that, um, and how that sort of gets people into the struggle and that sort of thing, what what do you see as the role of um, local languages like Soto and Soana um, getting more people in South Africa to use technology, to use the internet, um, uh, to express themselves and participate more freely on the internet? Yeah, uh, it, it, uh, it is important that the people, you know, take, you know, proud, uh, I mean, take pride in what they are, and especially in the language that they speak. We've got this African idiom which says, Motu ke pulel, which means a person is a language. And if you learn to speak other people's language, you learn more to understand them, to know them, to know their culture, and to love them. Uh, so language plays quite a lot of important role in the society. Um, when you, 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 you put uh, a different language in a song and then also collaborate and sing with other people, we teach each other and then it's like not about, hey, whatever, you know, just the percussive sound of that, you know, and people will sort of like, ah, what language were you singing about and what is it about? And it, it, it really helped. I read another book called The Song Lines about, uh, uh, from, 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 
um, it's about Australia and the Aboriginal, you know, languages where they have uh, they had this thing whereby when you travel the land, they teach you a song in another language, and you have to travel until you come to a certain point at another border. You'll get another people there; they will teach you another song in another language. So it teaches you how to travel, you know, where you can get water to drink and wells and everything. But if you cannot study or learn the song, you won't be able to travel. You will get lost. So you, you always have to, to learn the language in different languages everywhere you travel. So you see that the language plays a very much important role. And there was a must that you have to learn the language so that you may be able to travel. And I think this is what we need through technology and everything, whatever, just put it that, that the language that we can all like, you know, um, yeah, as we are immigrating into a global village, the question is how much do we want to belong? I think the thing that will play an important role is the language that we have to learn, China's language, and that way that way we can get by. Wow, okay, excellent answer. So does this mean you'll sing us a song about uh, using the internet in Soto? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how you learn, right? So. Uh, thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Google and the Black Googler Network, we thank you so much, Wissi, for sharing your wonderful music with us. Um, we appreciate all you Googlers for coming and making time out of your busy days. Um, I wanted to invite you all to remember on 225 this Thursday, we'll be celebrating more African music and food um, in Seville. And uh, just wrap this up and thank you so much again for coming. And thank you, Busi, again. It was wonderful. Thank you.